Um, we'll venture a little bit further north, uh, the real north, um, <laughs> but not, um, not too far north, Tom, if you, if you don't mind. Okay, so I'm going to skip uh, through, through this quite, uh, quite briskly. A lot of the first part of the um, presentation outlines the politics behind the organisation, which surprisingly um, mirrors Mersey Travel, which you heard about this morning, so I'm not going to replicate that. Um, but we come under um, NECA, the North East Combined Authority. Uh, we now have two um, additional local authorities in there. We've gone up to seven, Northumberland and um, Durham. So that gives us a wider area. Um, the problem is they can't decide whether I have a Lord Mayor or not. So that's got it kind of on hold a little bit at the moment. Um, I'll, say, I'll say no more, um, but I haven't got any communications people in the room, so don't worry about that. It's never been a problem for a Geordie. Um, but, um, you know, we, we, they coordinate the, um, the transport strategy for um, the North East. And it's made up of a number of key players. Um, Nexus, who's the, the delivery agent for transport in the North East. Metro is the brand name of the Tyne and Weart light rail system, not Morrison's supermarket. Um, when you go into Morrison's with your HV vest on, you end up loading uh, cars with loads of packages of goods, so be careful. Uh, DB Regio, Tyne and Weart, our current um, train operator, um, who, uh, who finishes on the 31st of March. And on the 1st of April, we are bringing in an in-house train operator. Um, we're going to run that for two years uh, in-house until we renew the train fleet uh, in two years' time. And Nexus Rail, my part of the business is um, the 6th Emergency Service, which deals with everything that goes wrong 24-7. I'm not going to read through all of these because the presentations will be available through the PDY website, but it gives you a bit of an outline of um, what the objectives are of um, NECA and what we're looking for in the future. Our political leaders expect an awful lot for us, from us, for an awful lot less these days. Um, but in, inclusive in that is the bus strategy, uh, proposals for metro funding and further modernisation after 2020, new rail management arrangements for the region as the new northern and transpennine franchises begin, and we need to build strong, new strong relationships with Durham and Northumberland, who've just come into the, uh, into the fold. What do we need to do? <coughs> Obviously, grow passenger numbers, metro, ferry, and bus services, improve customer satisfaction levels, um, launch pay-as-you-go across public transport in Northern England with smart ticketing, grow metro, th metro revenue through a range of ticketing options, and uh, realising the benefits from our new gate lines and validators, which minimise fraud. We can now stop people running in and out of the stations. Um, and so that's, that's a big plus for us. Oversee the three-quarter life metro car refurbishment, which we've completed, and roll out real-time bus information to passengers through countdown displays and apps. Plan for long-term development beyond what we're currently doing, the £400 million upgrade. Um, seek confirmation from government on how phase three is going to be delivered and funded, including a new train fleet and potential route extensions. Develop a new train fleet specification, which we're on with at the moment. Um, interested again in Mersey Rail's uh, thinking this morning. And prepare arrangements for the next operating concession in 2019. While we're doing all of that, we've still got £35 million of modernisation work to deliver as the day job. Uh, ensure Nexus is fit to deliver, to deliver a quality contracts bus scheme and continue to progress the QCS within the bus legislation. Targets, as you'd expect in any business, I'll not go through them. <coughs> but what is Metro? I'm not sure everybody knows what Metro is. 77.7 um, .7 kilometres of um, surface track, 7.7 .7 kilometres of subsurface track, 60 stations, a 90 car fleet, articulated bogies. Have had them running since 1980. 
um, driver-only operation since 1980, um, <laughs> without any problems or issues whatsoever. Um, joint running over network rail. The test track opened in 75. We were described as Britain's first modern light rail system. We're certainly Britain's first metric railway. We don't have miles and chains. Uh, everything is metric on Metro. We began in 1980. We move about 40 million uh, passengers per year. And trains run 19 hours each day. Generally get about three hours on a night time if we're lucky. And it's an established icon of Tyneside and Wearside. <clears throat> we do move 52,000 people every Saturday at St James's Park without fail. <laughs> and you'll notice my slides are black, not white, um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. For those not familiar with the route, the Green Line runs from airport through the city centre all the way down to Pilo. We then share network rail infrastructure through to Sunderland and then we run on a dedicated right of way from Sunderland to South Hilton, which is actually owned by Network Rail. Our other route is from South Gosford, clockwise around the coast, to the centre of the universe at St James's Park, <laughs> and then from South Gosford, down the south side of the road to South Shields. Um, we have aspirations, and I'll touch on this as we come um, through the, the presentation. A lot of housing development uh, in Seam on the Durham coast as the colliery villages disappear and uh, flash houses come up. Business park at Doxford, um, the Leam side line, Nissan, Washington, all sitting in there. We'd make another loop around Sunderland. Cobalt Business Park, um, huge business park on North Tyneside, sits astride the old um, freight route that ran down there. The formation's still there. Uh, West End of Newcastle is not served well by rail since the <coughs> rail system was diverted south of the river, so extending west. Metro Centre Retail Park and the Team Valley Retail Park and Industrial Estate, all ripe for, for grasp. <coughs> we extended to the airport in 1991. Very busy, very successful route that we, we operate. <coughs> It's an international airport, not a domestic airport. And currently we're a hub location to Dubai, later this year to New York, and later this year we'll be able to fly direct from Newcastle to Perth in Western Australia. So the route um, for us increases in importance by the day. Second extension was to Sunderland in 2002. And uh, I read all this tram train um, publications that come across. We've been doing it since 2002, running light rail units down to Sunderland. Interesting to think and hear about network rail's strategies, because one of the things that hangs over us is if network electri electrify from um, Sunderland to Newcastle to 25k, then our new train fleet has got to be slightly tweaked to accommodate that. Um, so interesting times. <coughs> Fleet renewals required by the early 2020s. We're looking at dual voltage and non-electric variants. Um, and we are seeking commonality with other fleets and other manufacturers for maintenance uh, facilities and spares. What Metro Futures is really about uh, Phase one was the introduction of the new ticketing system uh, and some station improvements, which is virtually complete. Phase two was large-scale renewal of uh, infrastructure. We're about two-thirds the way through that um, £400 million spend. And phase three is the development of metro and local rail services together to broaden out the capability in the northeast. And a lot of that is reliant upon um, old freight routes and routes that currently don't carry uh, passenger traffic. We've then got to think about the residual essential renewals from 2021 onwards. Mm. 
You'll have to excuse my voice because I've just come from Australia where it was 45 degrees centigrade to Newcastle, which was minus four this morning, so I'm <laughs> kind of struggling a little bit. <clears throat> um, opportunities within our grasp as we move forward with the new train fleet and with NECA. Um, the Tyne Valley Line, the demise of the Pacer is almost upon us. Um, Morpeth on the East Coast Main Line, um, Washington on the Leam Side Line, uh, next to the Nissan factory, um, Ashington Station in South East Northumberland, and Bedlington Station on the Blyden Tyne Line, freight only served currently. All, all opportunities which we're looking at um, at, at the moment. <clears throat> We began 37 years ago, surprisingly to a lot of people who walk onto the system think it's been open about five or 10 years. It's 37 years old. At that time, before we built Metro, this is what we expected our customers to turn up in the morning and travel on. So a lot of the permanent way became clogged with diesel um, spillage and contaminants. Um, most of the investment, and I'm sure the older members in the audience will be familiar with this. Most of the investment went into the East Coast main line or the main lines and the suburban and the branch lines became cascade secondary routes. So um, ballast conditions were poor, sleepers were second hand and rail was generally cascaded. <coughs> there were a lot of deferred renewals inherited from British rail days. Um, and cash exchanged hands at point of transfer. Um, but the money wasn't spent wisely. They basically re sleepered and re railed. There was very little attention to the formation. The saving grace was the Metro cars only got a 12.5 ton axle load, so it didn't pound it to bits, so it lasted a good few years. Um, but that meant that all the problems built up into one big problem and they all surfaced together. Um, <clears throat> there was low tolerance levels and basically a lack of underpinning knowledge um, in relation to permanent wear and uh, limited attention to ballast and formation issues was the fundamental uh, breakdown of the permanent wear. That gave us um, significant ballast deficiencies on 1970s, 80s concrete CWR. Um, as you heard, F27s, rails, you know, aging rails full of defects. Limited tamping activity, uh, they didn't really understand how to use the tamper or maintain it. Very poor track geometry and durability, low critical rail temperature values, buckles were taken as a daily occurrence, um, and high levels of rail defects. <coughs> now up north, up north, there are those who talk and those who do, right? So we don't talk a lot, we tend to get on and do it. And can we fix it? Yes, we can. Um, three hours. It's no good wandering around the track, carrying a rail disc saw for half an hour, and then carrying it back for half an hour if you've only got three hours to do the job. So we got some mobility into the track teams, um, a lot of help from Aquarius, adapted some Ford Rangers. And you put your, it's a simple solution. You put your gear in the back, the vehicle provides the lights, and off you go, and you've got three hours track time. Um, you just drive on and drive off. Um, we had no capability of getting above the overhead line to clean uh, grime off section insulators, inspect fastenings on the top. We had this um, tower wagon on the right, Lail and Daff, that just went up and down. So um, we, uh, we've got a vehicle that allowed us to uh, get above the line. Novel idea, we fit the pantograph to it. <clears throat> so we didn't have to use a metro car to, uh, to check measurements. Um, also, probably the biggest advantage is, and you're all familiar with it, is vegetation grown into the overhead line. So we actually get right up and lop the bits off the top. On most electrified railways, you'll see a lovely trim down behind the masts, but you'll see fingers over the top. Um, so that was a big thing. We heard today about um, asset management and measurement. Um, we kitted out with the help of Omnicom at York, we kitted out a metro car, um, did a full asset survey and inventory on the system, so we actually um, knew what we were dealing with. Reliability, uh, we're a little bit further north so it gets a little bit colder, um, so we got 
uh, electric point heat as from Swedish railways, from a company called Origo in Sweden, and we've had a 100% record for the 10 years I've been there. We've never had a points failure due to a point heater failure. Um, tremendous stuff. The Tampa, <coughs> it was built for Botswana, uh, who reneged on the deal. So Metro got it cheap in 1989. It's only a plain line Tampa. Um, it has this um, scaffolding tube out the back that takes half an hour to set up and half an hour to wrap up. So there's an hour of your track time gone straight away. Um, and when I arrived in 2007, uh, it hadn't turned a wheel for two years. Um, so that was a prime project to put together. We had lots, lots of guys with shovels spreading ballast. Um, a ballast brush was unheard of, um, but I found a ballast brush in the yard. Um, so we hooked it up to a machine. <coughs> oh, you'll never get a road railer on Metro system. Wire height's only 3.7. Um, but we persevered, and uh, off it goes with the tamper. s and tamping was, was a problem, uh, so we had to look overseas. Uh, and with the help of the Port of Tyne and um, Volker Rail in Holland, um, we managed to secure the services of a Dutch tamping crew and a Beaver tamper, s and um, I don't mind admitting I was laughed out of court when I brought this into the UK by colleagues in the industry. It'll never work, it's not big enough, won't handle it. Um, I don't know if, if there's Volker Rail people in the audience, I think it's based in the UK now and you can't get your hands on it. It's so much in demand. Um, but it's a mainline tamper um, with a metro capability uh, in terms of, of gauge and it did wonders with its uh, ALC through alignment controls on all of our s &C. And we started to get SD values that there's probably track engineers in this room would uh, chop an arm off for um, on the main lines. And we've got some very, very high quality and very, very good quick wins with an ethos that if I have to go back, I've failed. Okay, nothing more. If you go back to a job, you've failed. So we started from that premise. Um, and we started to recover the permanent way on, on the system. Had problems on the slab track, um, 88 clips per day out on Biker Viaduct, reported by the patroller. Um, we just couldn't hold it together, so I think he's in the room, Gavin. Is he, yeah, there's Gavin with the help of Gavin Livy um, from Pandrel. Uh, Gavin engineered a solution for us, and we've never had a problem since that day. It's absolutely fantastic solution. Um, but we couldn't sustain that with the budgets we had, uh, domestic renewals budgets and revenue budgets, limited resources and equipment. And it was obvious that the system at some point in the future was gonna grind to a halt because it would just collapse inwards. Um, so we had to put an asset renewal plan together with all this data we'd rapidly gathered <coughs> um, and present a case to the DFT to do significant upgrading of the system. That went well, and we got um, 400 million pounds to set off on this, on this journey. Basically, today, we're asking our customers to run around in something that is of that vintage. It was built the same year, okay? Customer expectations today are that, right? So we've got to move tremendously to, uh, to keep passenger confidence. We want to secure the future, enhance the service, make sure the system's capable of further development, <clears throat> and we've got to meet higher and higher expectations every day of the week. With help from uh, DB, who were very good in this, uh, the Arriva Group, um, commandeered uh, buses, and with our framework contractors, we went into blockade modes. Now, blockades were unheard of on the Metro. N never, never happened. Um, and to shut the system for 14 days was, was just outrageous. <coughs> but that's what we did. We did um, viaduct repairs, uh, renewed all sorts of track on, on viaduct that hadn't been touched for years. Huge swathes of railway were removed. And this all had to be done without Class 66 locomotives, without huge wrecks of spoil wagons and ballast wagons. 
twelve and a half ton axle load, three point seven metre wire height. You've got to be innovative. Road railers, ballast boxes, all sorts of uh, stuff in there. And it's all about logistics. <coughs> Northeastern Railway, the Skinflint Railway, right? Scrimped on its earthworks, very narrow cuttings, very narrow embankments, um, very low tight bridges, very narrow rolling stock. So working in here with this equipment under the wires, um, a steep, steep learning curve. Operators coming off the main line thinking they could conquer the world suddenly got themselves tied in knots. Um, but we persevered and TXM, our framework contractor, um, have, have worked wonders and we, we've got a real good output currently. Introduced the NYX, uh, portable crossover. Cycle times was the thing, getting rid of the spoil, getting the new ballast in. This improved it by 50%, two NYX crossovers uh, within the blockade. Product approval, probably took about 24 hours on Nexus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Echo acceptance is done on a Friday afternoon. Um, but don't make it rocket science. Assess the risks, keep them realistic, and document what you do. That's the quality we're getting in track renewals, our superhighway um, within the blockades. <coughs> Same with s and split bare concrete uh, units. We call it the walk away railway because you should walk away from it. There should be nothing more to do. You shouldn't need to come back. And if you have to come back, you'll be seen coming back and you'll have failed. So that's the culture we, uh, we operate. Big jobs, uh, double junction at South Gosforth, split bearers, um, tremendous, tremendous improvement. Down the central corridor on one side, up the central corridor on the other track, uh, blockade. And it's not about quantity, it's about quality, it's about right first time. Look at that geometry, look at that alignment. That tamp has got virtually no work to do when it comes on site. The welders love it, right? We need to renew all of the overhead line. Uh, we tested the market. Um, we got gold-plated prices for a gold-plated railway, which we can't afford. So um, we set up an in-house team of 60 guys, multi-flexible uh, working. They do civils works, they do permanent way re-railing, and they do overhead line uh, renewals. And we've got some kit, so we're going to embark on a journey of overhead line renewals. I don't think we'll be able to do it all ourselves, so we will need a bit of support in that. Um, QEB, uh, Newcastle at the Gateshead, uh, track renewal across there, introduced flashboat welder, and concrete sleepers across the bridge, all to new uh, design and spec. Uh, the latest blockade, <coughs> Monks in the Benton, you can see the sort of quality, uh, just using road drill kit that our, our guys are getting, uh, our contractors are, are providing for us now, and the sort of outputs we can do, and that gives us uh, a reasonable, um, well it gives us an excellent quality um, finish on the, on the job, a very clean railway. Our own guys, in-house guys, that's re-railing the central tunnels from um, Jesmond right the way through to Gateshead. They did that themselves. Um, if you haven't come across the McCulloch uh, track transposer, you should do very quickly. Obviously, no isolations required. Um, very portable, and it'll move quite large chunks of rail, and scrap removal becomes a dream. Uh, no trolleys, nothing. <coughs> um, St James's Station, uh, all the steel work was renewed uh, on the, on the uh, S&C here. It all had to be brought through the single bore tunnels by McCulloch's and then installed and the scrap taken out. You know, uh, and is it permanently engineering or is it artwork that it's absolutely, you know, picked it clean, that job. The Tampa didn't do what we wanted to do. Other people had cottoned onto the Volca rail machine. We couldn't get our hands on it. We had a risk there for S&C tamping. So we decided to purchase our own universal tamper and uh, put a business case for that. So that involves going in front of local government officers, which is a bit like the House of Lords Select Committee. 
and you come out with your shirt sticking to your back, but you also come out with a piece of paper that says um, you can buy your tamper for £2.3 million, pounds, so off you go. Um, contract went to Plasas. Uh, we saved a bit of money with um, low speed bogies. Uh, we don't need uh, mainline high speed bogies. Um, it wasn't going to run on network rail, um, so we de rated that. But it's not just a tamper, it's a track recording train and it's an overhead line measuring train as well. Um, so it does uh, quite a bit. Put a welfare compartment and office on it, um, ALC to cope with the through alignment design. All computer control tested in Linz, um, brought over. That's it tamping S&C at South Shields and that's it doing a track recording run on night shift up to the airport. Um, 12 and a half to an axle load, lightweight metro cars, low rail adhesion, autumn is a big problem for us. Um, so we built our own uh, railhead treatment train this year, which has been very effective. We've had a 48% improvement in performance since we um, ran this train. So uh, we're very, very pleased with, with the result. <coughs> um, rail life extension. Uh, we've initiated annual rail grinding programmes. Uh, the first one went to Harsco. And we had to chop a few bits off this machine, a few exhaust baffles, uh, spotlights on the roof, air horns had to be relocated to get it to fit into our, our system, but we've done uh, quite a bit of rail grinding. And uh, this year, Spino um, uh, won the contract and they did equally as, as good with, with their machine. Um, but you know, from, from a vehicle acceptance point of view, um, we'll probably turn those machines around within a week. Three quarter life refurbishment of the Metro cars. Um, we found a lot more corrosion um, than we anticipated, obviously, with them running around the coast. <coughs> 88 of the 90 cars went to Wabtec at Doncaster, had a full, uh, full cosmetic overhaul. Two didn't get overhauled because they were the original vehicles and the slightly different designs to the rest of the fleet, so it wasn't worth the trouble of doing them. But they came back um, fully refurbished and a slightly amended seat and interior. We've just done a big consultation with our customers and um, consensus that's come back is that they want the new generation of Metro cars to be like a London tube train with seating down either side right the way through. It's the consensus we've got in Newcastle and Sunderland. Um, slightly different to uh, Liverpool, I think you said they wanted a bit of a mix. <coughs> with Network Rail, we've done Sunderland Station refurbishment. We've done Haymarket Station reconstruction, new escalators, lifts, platform, uh, enamel panels, uh, display screen equipment. We've just completed Central Station at Newcastle. For those of you that pass through, go and have a look at it. Uh, our next big project is the, uh, the, the centre of South Shields has kind of migrated a couple of hundred yards up the road. Uh, retail shops have closed and business parks have opened, so we're going to move South Shields Station, um, which is currently here. <coughs> Down this bottom right, we're going to move at the other side of the railway bridge, and this is going to be the new uh, bus and metro interchange um, at South Shields. In addition to that, we're building a complete nexus uh, rail training facility at South Shields as well, which will cover driver training, signal and track overhead line, the whole, the whole nine yards. We've introduced smart ticketing, pop cards. Um, I say it's improved uh, security at the stations and it's reduced fraudulent travel. Um, people just walking on and off the system. Uh, look, I look after uh, bus infrastructure as well. We've done refurbishment at the interchanges, new shelters, new waiting areas, electronic displays, bus arrival times. Also out at the outlying satellite sites. And on certain routes we've brought in uh, very high quality buses where we don't have a rail link. So from Ashington and Bedlington and Blythe, we've got the MAX services. And customers expect these days um, air conditioning on the bus, Wi-Fi, low rider for access, air cushion suspension, leather seats, CCTV and LED light in the standard. Um, tremendous vehicles. We run the ferries and we thought with the construction of the second Tyne Tunnel, the ferry service would take a direct hit. 
uh, but actually it's improved. <coughs> so most of the traffic in the new time tunnel must be through traffic, but we're still seeing um, same levels of, uh, of service. We work closely with Newcastle College and the new Rail Academy at Gateshead um, in, in providing education and core skills. And if you haven't been here, please try and make a visit. It's really fantastic. Um, we're putting apprentices uh, through here. It's a hands-on facility. For the PWI, we hold our PWI meetings here, free of charge. Right, it's a fantastic facility. The kids come out of the class at four o'clock, straight into the PWI meeting in the next room. That's a local section meeting, right? <laughs> Normally about 60, 70 attendees. Um, we've got um, from, from all walks of life. I do, and I make a plea to Network Rail. I'd really like to see some more Network Rail people there, um, some, some more managers. Uh, we, we do run events there, two-day two road railer events. We do all sorts of things. But we've got to inspire these kids for the future. <coughs> How do we do that? We don't send them to a training classroom. We send one of the engineers to tell them how we do rail welding, not a trainer. No disrespect to trainers, but a guy who's done it. Then they go out with the supervisor and they go and do a weld. Right. They tend to remember that a lot quicker and a lot easier. When they come back from college, they, you know, they do a spell of three months, then they come back to us. They're not just watching somebody work. Right. This is the first day back from college and they're working on the tamper. Two kids absolutely enthused on working on a multi-million pound machine. Um, how do you keep their interest? Every year we do an emergency ferry exercise mid-river. This year we simulated a huge cargo ship ramming the ferry in half and the ferry was sinking and one person was overboard. Use the apprentices, lift an apprentice off with a Sea King helicopter, the rest of them go on the lifeboat. Um, it's all part of learning about the wider business of Nexus um, and keeping them enthused. Metro remains an icon of Tyneside, and it has an iconic future. It's happening right now. We're doing it right now. Not tomorrow, now. Thank you.